All right, guys, welcome back to Blue Ocean Market. Chef Anthony here again, hoping you guys are having a good time out there. Today, we're gonna do a stuffed salmon for two. This is our Scottish salmon. It's a Westeros organic salmon. Uh, obviously here in North Carolina, we don't have a great salmon run, but it's a delicious fish. It's a great way to get fish back into your diet. We're gonna stuff it with a house-made crab cake. We're gonna cut a pocket in here, top it with some of our jumbo lump crab meat from Manna Mesquite which is all hand-picked North Carolina crab. It's a fantastic product available here at the market. And if you look right in here, all that beautiful crab meat, and we're gonna stuff that in there as well, okay? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is, I've asked our fish cutter to go ahead and cut us about a one pound piece of the salmon. We need to cut a pocket in here. So we're gonna come, if you notice, the knife is on an angle facing out. And then we're gonna cut another pocket right here. I'm trying to show you so you can see this. We're gonna open it up. So we've kinda of got three little slits in here, okay? Take your crab cake, this is the crab cakes we make in house, and you're just gonna kinda of wedge that down inside. So far this is extremely difficult. We got all three of our little openings stuffed. We're gonna reshape it, because we want it to keep its shape as it cooks. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come in with some of the jumbo lump and just kind of press down. So you get that really nice crabby texture, really nice crabby flavor. We're gonna bake this for 35 minutes at 375 degrees or until finished. It may take a little less depending on exactly how much we have. So right here, a little salt and pepper right on top. And we're gonna put a little bit of butter on our baking sheet or our cookie tray. And we've left the skin on this. It's gonna go right on top. Just move it around so it doesn't stick. And we're gonna go to the oven. All right, so as you can see, we've got our dressed salmon here. It's been nice and stuffed. A little bit of butter here on the bottom. You can use pan spray, whatever you like. We're gonna go right here into our oven, 375 degrees, or until she's done. All right, so we're gonna prepare a kale apple hash to go with that salmon that we're working on in the oven right now. So what I've got here is your standard Idaho potato. We're just gonna go ahead and peel it. You know, I don't have a peeler here at the market, so we're just gonna cut the peels off. Not a big deal. Get rid of all that good nutritional stuff. And then we want to cut it down, making sure that most pieces are identical or very similar in size. That'll help with the next step, which is the cooking. Again, this is, you want this to be an edible size. This isn't like going out for hash browns for breakfast where they're humongous. We want this to be all be able to fit on a fork and be eaten nice and well, okay? So that's roughly what we're looking for with the size of the potatoes. The next thing we have here is a shallot, very similar to an onion. It's in the lily family, a little sweeter. I would uh, kind of say this is like a Bermuda onion or a Vidalia onion, but a little smaller, nice and tasty. We're gonna to wanna to brunoise or small dice this. So we have some brunoise right here. And here, we're gonna make another little cut right there. So we have about two tablespoons, maybe three. So we have our brunoise. The next thing we're gonna do is the basil. This is, I have basil growing in my garden, but it's not quite ready. I'm sure you guys have all been planting gardens. It's been, been a very popular activity. All right, so we just wanna pick all the basil leaves off, like you so. And the basil is gonna offer this nice anise or somewhat licorice flavor to what we're doing today, okay? We're gonna take the big leaves, put the little leaves inside, 
like so. And then we're gonna roll it up. Some of you may be better at this than I am. Shift and odd just means torn ribbons. So we just wanna make sure that we've got some nice shift and odd. You should never really chop basil. Basil's not, it'll turn black if you chop it because you've bruised it, okay? So now we get to our apple part. What we have here is we've got a Granny Smith apple. It's kind of a tart apple. We want to have some of the tartness here. We have some sweet, we have some anise. Now we were trying to develop that next flavor with the tartness of the apple. And you might say apple and hash all in the same tone. That's gonna be delicious, trust me. All right, roughly the same size as all the potatoes. And this right here is about a half an apple. If you like the apple flavor more, then by, by all means, add the other half of the apple. Again, uniformity is an important part of this. So there's our apple right there. All right, so what we have here is we have our pan. We have a little bit of clarified butter that we clarified earlier, right here. We're gonna add our roasted garlic. I think I've talked to all of you about how much I really like the roasted garlic. Let's go ahead and have that garlic start to per perfume that butter. Really get some of the flavors really working and wafting. Also, it starts to tell us when it's ready to start accepting the other ingredients. We're gonna add our apples. And then our shallots. Just let that kind of work. I think it's smelling really good in here right now. Season with salt and pepper. All right. Now we're going to add some kale. You kind of hear that kale crackling. A little more than you think you need because it's gonna wilt right down, okay? A little more seasoning, not much. We're gonna add our basil. We got a quick toss through. Notice how the kale has turned bright green. It's starting to give up some of its moisture. We're really starting to pull some of the chloroform out of it too. Chlorophyll. <laughs> I'm hanging out with chloroform today. You can really do it if you want to. <laughs> okay, so I cooked the potatoes a little earlier. I just cooked them in a little bit of that clarified butter. Kind of crisp them up. It's kind of a trick. You want this to stay nice and crunchy. You want to have some mouthfeel happening when this is going on. All right, we've got our hash working. Everything's looking fantastic. We've got some nice colors working. We're going to finish it with a little bit of the crab meat. Just right in there. There you have our apple crab kale hash going with our stuffed salmon. All right, so our salmon's just come out of the oven. It's sitting here, you can see how it's kind of opened up. We can see some of that crab. We still have some nice softness in there. Everything's been cooked all the way through. Now, you remember the kale crab hash that we made to go with this. We're gonna go ahead and plate this up so you guys can see what's going on and we'll finish the dish. So we got some of that lovely hash going down there. You can see all the crab meat, the apples, kind of the garlic. I mean, it smells incredible, guys. A big old piece of salmon. Remember, this is for two, guys. 
We're gonna put some of our chipotle sauce that we make in-house here on top. A little bit of parsley. A little fresh lemon juice right here. And then a few segments of lemon. And here you have our idea for salmon for two. It's one crab cake, a filet of salmon, kale, apple, hash.